Good morning and welcome. This is the Claro and A1 Digital Unlocking Efficiency Asset Insight Webinar Series first session. There will be two additional sessions, another one next Thursday at the same time, and the final session Thursday after that again at the same time. We will be talking about the Asset Insight Solution and uh, we'd like to move to the introductions. So welcome everybody. This webinar is being recorded. Your sound has been muted. Please enter any of your questions in the chat. We will send you a follow-up email after the webinar. My name is Patrick Verdugo. I'm the Director of IoT Product Management at Claro Enterprise Solutions in the USA. And my colleague will now introduce himself, Martin. Hello, my name is Martin Seiler. I'm based in Vienna. I'm working for A1 Digital. I spent my last nine years in the sector of telecommunication and IoT. And I'm already happy that I will be part of the webinar today. Um, I would say, let's kick it off. So first we would like to start um, to give you a bit then the overview, what we typically hear from our customers in our customer talks, um, some typical pain points, what we see in the market. Let's start on the right hand side. Actually, it's a lot of times it's about the current position. So companies, but also people are interested in the current position of their assets. The asset could be a trailer, it could be compressor, it could be a device, it could be even a suitcase with some valuable goods in. And so on the one hand side, the current position is interesting for our customers, but also the traceability of the transfers. So not only where is my asset right now, but how has the asset moved there? Which leads me to the next section, which is on the left hand side. Two more important points for our customers they have told us is the operational readiness. So is my asset ready? as soon as I would like to use it. And also the on-time availability, like will my asset be there when I need it? Uh, two different things. And this leads us then to the next section on the left-hand side, on the bottom side. Um, a lot of customers have complained about they have no good overview about their assets. So one, one obvious thing is of course, they would like to get notified if, if there is a theft, if there is a, a fear of having a theft, but also they would like to see if there are some errors in the handling, if there is, the assets are used in the wrong way and therefore they are maybe damaged or they are maybe um, not treated well in the way they are designed for. And last but not least, what they are telling us is they would like to have an overview about the operation time. It's very hard to keep track about assets, especially if you think you have several dozens or even hundreds or thousands of assets that you can document in an optimized way, the operation time, where they have been used, when they have been there, when the assets have been back, and also if they were used in an efficient way. So imagine you have 10 different assets and they are all allocated to one central place, but only two of the assets are actually used, which means eight of the assets are not used at all. And these are some, these are the summarized the major pain points which we observed in the market and where we saw the need of having a solution for it. I would like to echo some of the comments that Martin has made regarding the European market. We see the same concerns, the same necessity in the US market the necessity to trace uh, assets, to know the location of the asset at all times, to be able to look at asset history, and most importantly, to also monitor asset condition. And those are some of the things that we have heard from our customers, uh, which basically echo what Martin has uh, explained. So based on all these pain points, which we collected from the market, so from the European, but also from the US market, we have categorized this in three major use cases. The first use case we have identified, we've called it long-term asset tracking. 
what what is it about as you can see already on the picture it's about assets they are moving from time to time could be bigger assets or smaller assets they are not necessarily moving each and every second or each and every minute but they are moving constantly each and every month so that you would like to keep track of this asset and you would like to get notified with a heartbeat signal that you know the asset is still there where you have left it I would like to add that the uh, asset could be, as an example, a container. It could be transported by ocean. It could be transported by rail. It could be transported by truck. But the asset could be, as Martin mentioned, something much smaller. It could be a generator at a construction site. It could be a crane. It could be a vehicle. It could be a pallet of goods. We will talk about some of those examples as we go forward. The next big use case, what we identified, is not only about the asset anymore, but it is basically about the process of shipment. So we have called the use case shipment tracking. The big difference in this use case is we are not attaching something directly to an asset and monitoring an asset. The difference is we can attach something to a shipment, which means you have a digital twin of your shipment you can see exactly where the shipment is going and you can release this connection again which means you can reassign to a different shipment we will talk more about this use case next week in our second session um, but this is one of the major use cases we can see as well in the market because especially in the logistic area and in the logistic branch there is a lot of potential for such solutions to add to that, I would like to say that uh, our shipment tracking capability includes as a default feature, the ability to track condition, which includes things like temperature. So if you are shipping pharmaceuticals, if you're shipping food that has to be refrigerated or frozen, and you need visibility to the cold chain, regardless of who is doing the shipping, whether it's your own vehicle, whether it's a third party company, whether it's one of the big shipping companies, you still will get all of the information related to your shipment. And this is already the perfect uh, handover point then to the third big use case what we have identified, uh, which is actually asset and shipment monitoring. So beside the classical position, the classical GPS tracking, or via any other technology, the, the tracking of the position, you can do much more with such systems. So you can do real monitoring of your assets, which could be the temperature, like just mentioned, which could be a vibration, which could be a shock, which could be a motion, which could be also an opening event. So there are various uh, possibilities. We have there for different sensors and we identified that the position is always only the start. So as soon as the position is tracked and our customers can see everything live moving around in the platform, then the next and the next steps come and the project continues by adding some more functionality into the existing solution. How we are doing this is actually presented on the next slide. So all these use cases follow a certain structure. In our case here, you can see an asset management module. So we focus on the first use case on the asset tracking, but all of the three use cases follow the same structure. So on the left-hand side, you can see your asset. It could be a compressor like here, it could be a container, it could be a suitcase, whatever. We are starting then from the second point, which you can see here, which is the IoT tracking device. This is a robust tracking device. It's battery powered with different variants of it. And this is actually then gathering all the information out in the field. So starting with the GPS position, of course, but also adding some more other sensors which are needed. Uh, for instance, the temperature, for instance, the shock and collecting the data. In this device included, there is already a A1 digital connectivity SIM chip. This enables the device actually to be used in a global scale. So globally spoken, we support more than 400 roaming partners with different areas, with different network technologies, with different data consumption. So we can adapt to different use case patterns and we can choose the correct 
profile then in the back so that the device actually gets access to the networks which are also supported by the device. With this chain, we are capable of sending and transmitting all this data to one central platform. We are calling the platform Asset Insight because this is exactly what we would like to give to our customers. We would like to give insights how their assets are doing, how the assets are performing, where the assets are right now. And this leads me to the other points, which you can see here on the slide. So we are basically tracking and monitoring your assets 24 seven around the clock. You can not only track a position of a tracker, you can really manage asset data. You can upload some documents, you can upload pictures, you can um, insert the vehicle identification number, you can insert the, the, the year of construction. So you can have a lot of information in the platform. You can use different rules. You can create reports. You can create notifications based on different events. Uh, those notifications can be sent to you. And this actually enables you and your colleagues to work with the platform in a simple way and to enable your customers to get some more insights, to get some more information about the assets you're using, you're shipping, uh, and you're uh, actually working with on daily basis. I'd like to add a few technical comments. First and for, uh, foremost, the IoT tracking device is an industrial quality device with a very robust uh, manufacturing process behind it. It is uh, IP66 compliant. It's dust proof. It's waterproof. It can operate from minus 40 degrees to 125 degrees Celsius. So it can tolerate very, very cold environments, very, very hot environments. It is um, uh, also manufactured and uh, has certain qualities, including some very sophisticated deep hibernation technology to preserve the battery, to give the battery uh, life, uh, to be able to meet your requirements. And that's one of the other things that, uh, from a technical perspective, is a, a differentiator. You can change the behavior of the IoT tracking device on the platform yourself, and that will update the device. So for example, if I have a generator parked at a construction site, maybe I only need to know that it's there once or twice a day. I also may want to geofence it so that I know that it's not in motion. And if it does start moving, I get an alert. But more importantly, when I need to relocate it, I can tell the tracking device, report in every 30 minutes as it's being moved from one construction site to another. So I can change the behavior of that tracking device, which gives me unparalleled monitoring and management capability of my assets as they uh, basically fulfill my operation. Thanks a lot for adding this. Um, by the way, this is already a very good teaser. We will have, like already mentioned, three sessions. In the third session, which is in two weeks from today, we will have a deep dive into the technical solution, like how we are choosing our trackers, how everything is working together. So if you're interested in the more the techniques in behind it and how everything is working together, we invite you also to our third session of this webinar series. But for now, Let's move on to some real examples, what we did already and how actually such solutions um, came to life and how our customers are using them. So first, I would like to start with the long-term asset tracking use case. In this case, you can see it already on the picture, there are different assets around. Um, we have containers, we have longer and shorter containers. We have special containers uh, for, for liquids and for gases, uh, but we also have rail cars. So we have totally different assets and all these different assets could be connected and can be combined in one central platform. So what we have done, we have basically chosen a global battery powered tracker. This is very important because typically in such use cases, you do not have any power supply. That means you need to have a long lasting battery, which also like Patrick already mentioned, has a high temperature range and can operate from the north to the south and even via different continents. To enable that, 
it's on the one hand side very important that the device supports the respective network technologies, which means starting from 2G via 3G, 4G, then also some technologies like narrowband IoT or CUTM1. But it's also important that the tracker can fulfill the local legal requirements. Like in Europe, we have the CE certification. In the US, we have the FCC certification. So we need to make sure that we have a device which fits also to the local regulations and laws. That the system is then capable of sending data, you need to have global network coverage. This means prior to every project, we are checking where the devices should be used, where are the assets moving around. And based on this, we are checking then if all the network technologies in the respective countries are supported and are in the roaming contracts available that we can use the solution there. And the third important point is, if you think about such an IoT solution, one of the crucial parts is always the rollout, how to install such a solution. And therefore, we have created a very simple process. So you're actually onboarding your assets, we are onboarding your devices, and at the end of the day, the only thing which needs to be done is to link the asset to the device so that you get the correct information directly to your device, directly to your asset from the device. So a few comments here. Uh, while you what you see there is the industrial strength specifically meant for like rail cars or containers, we have different form factors, different devices with different operational capabilities, all of which are fully compliant, as well as the fact that our platform is GDPR uh, compliant in, for, for European uh, privacy um, information purposes. And in the US, obviously, we respect uh, privacy information as well. So we make sure the platform is compliant in both places. So moving on, what we can see then at the end of the day, like you can see here, we are doing global projects. So we have trackers in Europe, we have trackers in the US, we have trackers in Asia. Basically, these are the same trackers and they are working in different areas. And if we zoom in a bit or double click, then we can see also how these assets have moved throughout the US. In this case, you can see different dots, and this depends basically just on the configuration, how you have configured the tracker, that much information you will get. So if you get, for instance, every day one position or in a movement every two minutes a position, it's totally different than in the data granularity. And with this, we make sure that you can follow your assets globally. You receive notifications, for instance, uh, prior to the delivery, to your destination, you can receive a notification and you can provide this proactively to your customers. So you are informing them before they will receive actually the asset demo site. So what you see here in the map is actually a real customer. One of our customers who is in the glass uh, industry, they, they manufacture and also ship architectural glass, the glass that's used for uh, solar power industrially, as well as some very uh, expensive, very dangerous gases, which are used to, to treat automobile windshields. And in the in the uh, example that you see here, we are actually picking up the tracking, ground tracking of those gases, which are being moved from the port in Louisiana to its destination in Detroit, Michigan. This, this is done uh, in the US, but it's also done in Europe and also done in Asia. Um, we have uh, also the ability when we are moving architectural glass, for example, or windshields for vehicles, those are very uh, sensitive to shock. So one of the things the customer can configure, assuming that let's say these uh, architectural glass is, is being transported by truck or by rail, we can actually set the um, sensitivity and report if it's been exposed to severe shock because glass when exposed to severe shock becomes brittle. And this is going to ultimately impact the consumer at the end of the shipping. So these are some of the things that we provide. In terms of the actual gas, we can even add a pressure sensor, for example, and use our gateways as use our trackers, excuse me, as a gateway to bring uh, to the platform pressure information. So if you have a specific need that requires a different type of sensor, 
our platform is extensible and our, our trackers operate as gateways. So the tracker has multiple technologies, GPS, cellular communications, as well as Bluetooth communications, including all of the sensor technology embedded within the tracker. And now you have talked already a lot about the condition when on a transport, and this leads actually uh, already to the next use case, which we would like to present today. Totally other field, so no big containers, no big trailers. But in this case, our customer was highly interested in track jewelry shipments. So the issue here is in such a jewelry shipment, it's very high valued. Uh, and a lot of this uh, is not even... Um, some new goods which comes directly out of the factory but these are some goods which private persons hand in to refurbish them um, to polish them to receive it back which means they have a very high interest of knowing where are these transports at a certain point in time and what's done on the transport uh, on the way of transport actually and the solution for this was they have used or they are using a robust transport box and we have implemented a battery powered GPS tracker, which is mounted inside. Like you can see it here in the second picture, we have mounted on the lid a magnet so that we can detect even opening and closing events. Um, so as soon as the lid is closed, we can detect this. And as soon as the lid is opened, we can detect this as, it as well. And based on pre-configured alarms, we can then notify the customer if this transport box is opened outside the area where it should be opened. Actually, of course, uh, we have used here manipulation resistant screws so that also from the outside, it's not possible to somehow manipulate this solution and to somehow get in. I think this illustrates the flexibility and uh, the fact that we can do everything from tracking rail cars, which we are doing very heavily in Europe, over 20,000 rail cars are in production and being tracked on a daily basis, down to tracking shipments, and then even beyond that, down to tracking individual uh, boxes, as you see in this particular example. So the platform is very flexible. The devices that are used for reporting location and asset condition vary in, in terms of size and capabilities, although the capabilities are fairly um, common across the different device types. And basically, we would like to keep the webinars short and simple. Uh, and therefore, we come already to the closing. Um, before that, I would like to summarize again. From my point of view, um, five points are very important. What such a system can bring as a benefit. This is more transparency. This is more time because you have reduced time for searching assets. This is more security, like you can see here, because you know exactly where an asset is at the time. This leads to save more money because you have much more efficient processes. And at the end of the day, it should lead to more customer satisfaction. And how you could, you could get familiar with this um, is actually a trial offer. We have an offer on the table for three months that includes two trackers, including the connectivity. And I want to take a sidestep here to talk about the connectivity. In the U.S. market, these trackers operate on all three major carriers. They have a, basically a multi-carrier SIM, uh, eSIM uh, embedded. So you will always have coverage regardless of whether you're driving into or moving into an area where one carrier dominates and the other carrier can barely connect. And then you move out of that area to the next area where the second carrier is more prevalent. What we're trying to do here is make sure that our connectivity is consistent throughout the voyage or throughout the movement of that particular asset. The, the offer includes the Asset Insight platform and 24 hour 24 by 7 support multilingual, uh, as well as the setup and the training. And we're offering that for $199 for three months. And uh, that way you can try it. And if you like it, you can buy it. And if you don't, you can return it, which I think is a great deal. 
thanks so much for participating in our today's webinar. Um, we will be back next week, same time, same link, uh, where we will talk more about shipment tracking, the process in behind, what's important at shipment tracking, how can you be independent from different other systems, uh, and how can you get always the information to you, but also to your customers, which you need at a certain point in time. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to ask a quick, uh, are there any questions? Doesn't look like we have any questions, gentlemen. Okay, great. Thank you again, everyone, and see you next week.